this is an interesting article that has been published on December 6. Um, uh, the perils of becoming a republic. Of <coughs> the perils of becoming a republic of scandals. Brahma Chalani, the Hindu. The Hindu India situation is best explained by an ancient proverb: "A fish rots from the head down." When the head is rotten and the uh, body politic cannot be healthy, and when those at the helm of remain uh, wedded to grand corruption. Uh, this is an article uh, which has been published in Hindu on uh, December 6, 2010 um, about the perils of becoming a republic of scandals. This is written by Brahma Chalani uh, from the Hindu. <clears throat> the Hindu India's uh, situation is best explained by an ancient proverb, a fish rots from the head down. When the head is putrid, the body politic cannot be healthy. And when those at the helm remains wedded to grand corruption, clerks or traffic police cannot be singled out for taking small bribes. Corruption number one, national security threat. Corruption in India is the number one national security threat and it is eating into the vitals of the state, enfeebling internal security and crimping foreign policy. India confronts several pressing national security threats, but only one of them, political corruption, poses an existential threat to the state, which in reality has degenerated into a republic of mega scandals. The pervasive misuse of public office for private gain is an evil, eating into the vitals of the state, sapping India's strength. When important decisions from arms procurement to policy changes are often, often tainted by corrupt considerations, it is inevitable that national security will get compromised. If India today is widely seen as a soft state, much of the blame must be pinned on the corrupt and the compromised that lead to it. Such softening of India has made the country a tempting target for those seeking to undermine its security. India's situation is best explained as, as we already told, uh, like a fish rotting from the head down. Um, as, as the then Chief Justice of India pointed out last year, the plastic explosives employed in the deadly 1993 Mumbai bombings had been smuggled into the country due to local corrupt practices. But it is the institutionalized corruption in high office that is eviscerating the republic. When domestic policy is seriously strained by corruption, foreign policy can hardly be dynamic and proactive. Such is the weakening of the state that India did a better job warding off regional security threats when it was economically weak, like during Indira Gandhi's reign, than it is able to do today, despite nearly two decades of impressive GDP growth. Economic liberalization paradoxically has whetted personal greed and brought in an era of big bucks corruption, even as a system of arbitrary environmental stoppages and clearances have taken the place of the old license permit Raj. India now is witnessing not mere corruption but national plunder. The consequences are, is that it is getting feebler institutionally, yet scandals remain so recurrent that public anger over any of such misdeeds is a short-lived. Indeed, one strategy often employed to ease public anger over revelations of a new mega scandal is to start targeting second-tier corruption selectively. The misuse of government agencies remains rampant. Corruption scandals now actually resemble television soap operas with engrossing but diversionary plots. To deflect public attention, the focus on the Immediate aftermath is always on the government process related to probing a scandal, not on opening judicial paths to identify the real beneficiaries and quickly recover the loot. The latest scandal over the government's allotment of second generation telecom spectrum in 2008 falls in the same category. Although the putative loss to the National Treasury has been estimated about $39 billion or 14.3% of India's total current external debt. The sheer scale of the kickback scandal 
indicates that multiple political interests must have had a hand in the till. If there is any good reason, it is the belated appointment of a clean professional as a telecom minister. Make no mistake, the spiriting away of billions of dollars to international financial safe havens constitutes more than criminal wrongdoing. When economic contracts are signed or policy decisions taken so as to net handsome kickbacks, it constitutes a flagrant assault on the national interest. India ranks among the top countries whose stolen national wealth is stashed away in Swiss bank accounts. Yet, no Indian politician has ever been convicted and hanged for waging such a war on the state. Let's be clear, corruption stalls development, undermines social progress, undercuts the confidence of citizens in the fairness and impartiality of the public administration, it impedes good governance and erodes the rule of law. This cancer of corruption of Indians alarmingly spread to elements within the two institutions that are central to the country's future, the judiciary and the armed forces. Recent revelations have highlighted the deep corporate penetration of the major political parties and the manner big businesses influence policy making and media coverage. The rot in the media, the nation's supposed watchdog, stands exposed. In fact, even the integrity of the national Padma Awards have been badly vitiated.